Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to take a look at the latest update for Topaz Photo AI version 3.2. There's a lot of nice new features in it. We're going to get a look at it today. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm excited to show you the latest update for Topaz Photo AI version 3.2. By the way, if you don't yet own Topaz Photo AI, I'll leave my affiliate link in the description below this video. When you use that link, I make a small commission, and that helps me to keep these tutorials coming your way. So thank you when you use my links. I really appreciate it. The first thing I want to tell you about is we have three new Sharpen models. We have Lens Blur version 2, a new model called Natural, and another one called Refocus. We're going to look at those first. I'll start out by coming down to the recommendations, and I'll apply recommendations. Now, when you click this button here, you're going to get a message that says, are you sure you want to apply autopilot settings to all selected images? In this case, I only have one image. I'll just click apply. And just take note, it is running denoise as well as sharpening on this image. And this is just a stock image. I'll have a raw file coming up for you in a bit. I'll click on sharpen so we can see the controls. If you'll note, Autopilot has picked Lens Blur version 2 for this image. And this is the first new model I want to show you. Now I have some info up on the screen for you. You may want to pause the video and read it and see what this new model is all about. And I must say these Autopilot settings look really good on this image. Now, I'm going to click this button right here so we can see a before and after. I'm going to drag this bar across here. So on the left is before and I'll drag this over, and now you can see the after, and you can see it's done an excellent job on this image. Now, let's compare it to another model. Let me click on Standard and see what we get here. And yeah, that's really not that bad. Standard always does a pretty good job. Let me drag this across again. Here's the before, and here is the after. So I definitely think uh, Autopilot has chosen the right model for this image, and I do like that lens blur version too. Let's go back to it. I'll click on it again, and that looks really nice. Let me drag this bar across here. So there's the before, and now here is the after. But you'll notice that we have a lot of really nice detail that it has brought out, and I think I like this. By the way, this is what the original lens blur model looked like. As you can see, there's some artifacts in there. It's definitely not as good. So I think the new version is an improvement. Now remember, Autopilot did choose this model and I think it did a good job. And I do like the settings. Now, of course, if you need more sharpening, you could drag this to the right or less sharpening, you could drag it to the left. It's totally up to you. If you want to reset your autopilot setting, just double click in the circle and it'll reset itself. Next up, we'll look at the new natural model. Now, I have some info up in the screen. You may want to pause the video and read through this, but this model is supposed to help with issues where autopilot over sharpens, and it's really good for images like this rabbit image with a lot of detail. So let's check it out. I'll go ahead and click on natural. And it looks pretty good, but it looks a little over sharpened to me. So I would probably pull back on this strength. Maybe let's try it back around here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I might even pull it back a little bit more. Looks really nice. And again, this is a good model when you have a lot of fine detail like these hairs in this rabbit here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this line over so we can go ahead and see another before and after. And let's drag it back over. And here is the after. And that looks really really good. You know, it's a toss up between that and lens blur, but I still think I like lens blur, but this looks really nice. Now the last model is refocus. I have an image that's kind of soft and it's a raw file. So I think it'll be a better candidate for the new refocus model. Just for comparison, I'll click on standard again. And I'll tell you, it really does look over sharpened. And that's where they say the natural model comes in when you feel that standard and strong or just over sharpening the image try natural and i think it will be something you're gonna like but let's go ahead and just pull back in the strength to see if we can make this look better and that does look better but i still think i like the natural model over the standard model for this image because it has a lot of fine detail and i think it really works for this image Although my favorite was the Lens Blur version 2 model. Now stick with me because I will get to the refocus model, but I want to tell you about another new feature in Photo AI. 
Autopilot has got a lot smarter. Now you'll notice down here in the bottom right hand side of the interface, we get these different suggestions and so on. So Autopilot is going to suggest what it thinks you want, but now it is learning how you edit. Isn't that interesting? It learns how you edit. And let me show you what I mean. Let's come up here to Topaz Photo AI. I'll click right here and let's click on the preferences. And take note, under Autopilot, we now have personalization. This is new. And we have two categories, personalization data and preset suggestions. And let's read this. Autopilot adjusts parameters and model selection by learning how you edit. Resetting will return your Autopilot parameters and model selection to the default settings. Your image count will also be reset. And you'll notice right now, mine says personalization based on 14 images edited. So it's learning how I edit inside of Photo AI. It knows how I like to adjust my settings. It looks at the image, what kind of an image I'm working on. Maybe if it's an out of focus image versus a landscape image and how I edit those images, how I adjust my sliders, what models I pick. It's learning all that stuff. So it'll base what model it's using from the choices I typically make and how I adjust the slider settings in those different models. And that goes for upscaling, sharpening, and also for denoising. And if you ever wanted to relearn, you can click on reset learning and it'll start learning all over again from scratch. Just in case you're not happy with what it is doing for you, you may want to start again. But it doesn't just stop there. We also have preset suggestions. I'm going to cancel this for now because I want to show you something. If I come up here to add enhancements, you'll notice I have different presets that I've created. And Autopilot will learn what presets I like to use on different images, maybe on landscapes, maybe on macro photography, whatever. I might have different presets for different things. And it's learning what presets I'm using and then it'll suggest down here, maybe use this. You may want to use this preset because it notes that I use that a lot. So it's going to give me those suggestions. So I can just click right here. And I think that is really a great feature. What do you think? I'm going to come back up here and go into preferences again. And let's read here. Photo AI suggests presets you might want to add by learning how you edit photos resetting will erase your preset usage history your presets will still be accessible from the enhancement menu but may be suggested less frequently so you could reset this again if you're not happy with the suggestions you're getting you may want to reset learning and let it start all over again but now photo ai learns how we edit what presets we like to use a lot and it examines the type of an image we're using and it bases everything on that as well as how we choose different models and how we adjust those models again what presets we use and it'll make suggestions and it'll make adjustments all according to how we edit i'm really happy about this new feature inside of photo AI and let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Before I move to that raw file in the refocus model, let me click on sharpen because I want to show you another really cool new feature. This is small, but I think you're really going to like it. When you're using controls here, remember if you wanted to, you know, make a selection of just a subject, the background, or if you just wanted to paint on your own selection, whatever you wanted to do, you'd have to click on edit selection. But now under controls, you have auto selection moved into here. So you can click this drop down and choose whatever you want here or if you choose custom it'll take you right into edit selection so that's really nice so you could go ahead and make a selection right here inside of controls which is a real time saver and now let's move on to the raw file and i'll be working from lightroom and now here I am in Lightroom. Now I want to say something. Topaz have improved the way they're working with RAW files. They're starting with Canon, but I'm sure they will eventually get around to doing it for all camera manufacturers. So starting out, they're using the camera profile that ships with your Canon camera, allowing them to display your CR2, CR3, and CRW files with exact color reproductions so that's huge now if you send your raw files from lightroom into photo ai you could have an issue if you don't do this right so follow me closely i don't think this happens if you send raw files into photo ai as a standalone app i think this is only a lightroom issue 
And again, this is for Canon cameras right now, and I happen to have a Canon RAW file that I'll show you. Now, this is very important, and listen carefully. What you need to do is, you see my profile right now is on Adobe Color. That will not work. If I send this into Photo AI right now, it will not apply the camera profile. So what you need to do is click the four squares right here to go into your profiles. And what you need to do is find your camera matching profiles. You can use any of the camera matching profiles. In this case, I will use Faithful. So I'll click on Faithful and click Close. Now you'll notice I have the camera Faithful profile attached to this image. So that's important. You got to use a camera matching profile. It can be any of them, but you must use it. Do not use an Adobe profile. And then to send a raw file into Photo AI to process it as a raw file, you must do this. You got to come up and click on File, and then come down and look for Plugin Extras, and then click on Process with Topaz Photo AI. That will launch Topaz Photo AI. And now I want you to look right up here. You see this badge right here? This is telling us this is a matching camera profile applied in its camera faithful. Once it gets back into Lightroom, you could change that to any of the Canon profiles and it will work, but you gotta choose one to start with, preferably the one you do wanna use. And as you can see, Photo AI has run raw denoise on this image. I'll click right here to open up the controls and then you can see the settings and I think they're good. Right now I'm zoomed into 100%, but you could change that right down here to any of these different values. I'm going to go ahead and click here and close that. But here's what I want to do, because I want to show you that new refocus model. If we come down here to our suggestions, you see right here, it says apply recommendations. And you see the little green dot. Anything with a green dot is an autopilot adjustment. And sharpen all is an autopilot adjustment. So I could click sharpen all here, or I could click apply recommendations. So I'll click that. This message comes up. Are you sure you want to apply autopilot settings to all the selected images? And I do, so I'll click apply and autopilot will run. Now I'll click on sharpen and open up the controls. And right now it is set for standard. And let me go ahead and zoom in a little further. Let's go into maybe 200%. And I'm still in this split screen mode. So I'm going to take this slider and drag this across. There's the before. And now here is the after. And it doesn't look too bad. But let's click on refocus and see what we get. Okay, so there is the after. Let's see the before. There's the before, and here is the after. Now, that looks really good. It looks really natural. And Topaz recommend this model for this type of an image with a lot of blur, and it's a little on the soft side like this image is. And that looks really good. So let me drag this slider across. Here's before, and here is after. And I'm zoomed into 200%, and that looks good. I may want to give this a little bit more sharpening. I'm going to drag this to the right. And remember, every time I settle on an adjustment, Photo AI is learning what I'm doing. And that looks really good. Let me drag this back across. There's the before and there is the after. And I like it. And that's all I want to do to this image. And I will click Export to Lightroom Classic by clicking this button. It'll send it back to Lightroom. And then we can see how this new matching Canon profile stacks up against the original RAW file with the same profile. And here we are back in Lightroom. This is the original CR2 file with the camera faithful profile on it. And now let me click on the photo AI result. Okay, so look at the image and see if the color is shifted that much. So this is the photo AI and this is the original RAW file. And I'll tell you what, again, this is photo AI and this is the original Canon, and I think they look pretty darn close. I'm not going to say they're 100%, but I would say they're at least 98% almost matching, so I think it's a really good result. Now, let me go ahead and zoom in. This is the original image, and now here is the photo AI result, and look at that beautiful sharpening on there. Again, the original, and now here is the photo AI result. And I think it's done a really good job. So give that new refocus model a try, especially on images like this that are soft and have a nice bokeh blurry background. I think you will enjoy the results you're getting. 
Well, there it is, everyone. This was a first look at the latest update for Topaz Photo AI version 3.2. And don't forget, I have an affiliate link in the description below. Use that link. It'll take you over to Topaz where you can purchase Photo AI and other Topaz products. I really appreciate it when you use my link. Hey, if you enjoyed today's first look, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.